Hi everyone, welcome back to the F1 Forum and in today's episode we're going to be talking about the F1 video game series and where the future should should go with regards to this series. But first off we're going to talk about the F1 2015 game which is the most recent game released by Codemasters back in July last, last year and it was the first game on the PS4 and Xbox One after we got a couple of games on the PS3 and Xbox 360 and F1 2013 and F1 2014 on old gen but this was the first game that we got on the quote new gen or slash current gen and for a lot of us in the end it turned out to be a bit of a disappointment and we're not sure where this where this F1 game series is, is going to go so let's actually start with a little bit of a review of what F1 2015 was like both the good and the bad things so let's start with the good things first F1 2015's presentation is absolutely fantastic. I can't fault it, well, except for probably Anthony Davidson's uh, commentary during the championship season mode. Get but mode, but it's a it's a step it's a step forward. It's something that's new to the series. It's something that's quite oh, relatively unique. I mean, most of the sports games now have like intros with FIFA, NBA, WWE, etc. But the fact that the F1 has managed to be able to do something like this, I mean, it was back in F106, but it wasn't really that great. So I like that they've done that. The second thing is I think the gameplay is much improved. It's the best handling model that we've had so far in the Codemasters games. And I like the fact that the AI is a little bit harder to pass. It's a, it, you have to be a little bit more strategic when it comes to the overtakes. You can't just dive bomb down the inside straight away and assume that the car is going to move out the way. That's not how real F1 works. And also, they take advantage of mistakes like myself, like here, where I went wide off the corner and Suter was able to repass me. And again, there's another example as we come up towards the hairpin in Canada. This is actually from my uh, Georges Bianchi tribute career mode. Please have a look at that if you uh, ever have a chance. As you can see here, we tried to get down the inside of Alonso, but Alonso had so much better drive on the outside. On the older games, we probably would have forced him out wide and he would have just given up that position. And then also... Kevin Magnussen, who's just behind us, is now taking advantage of that. And you, but usually the, the AI would back out of these sort of moves on the older games. But it's very nice to see that Co-Masters have made steps forward. There are some few glitches with, for example, with the um, the back markers and stuff. But all in all, I think it's a definite step up. However, despite these improvements, the game w itself was released in a very poor state. It was. There were plenty of bugs and glitches that were apparent that was found by the F1 community. For example, the gearbox glitch when you come out of the pit stop where it just slept, it just didn't go out of first first gear as you exited the pits and you had to manually get yourself out of gear. But also, the main problem with this game was the lack of features. Compa it's very similar to when EA released their NHL 15 ice hockey game for the new generation and most of the popular game modes that people enjoyed were actually taken out of the game. So here's a list of game modes or features that were actually taken out of F1 2015 that were in previous games. No scenario mode. So this was a game mode where you were just given a set of tap. you get put into a certain scenario in a F1 car and you had to beat the objectives that were given. There was like a bronze, a silver and a gold objective and depending on how well you did you got this respective trophies. It was, it was a game mode I didn't really play that much, personally, but I knew some people did actually play this. No co-op championship. So this was a feature that was added in F1 2011 to allow for two players to actually compete in a driver's championship, a driver's and constructor's championship, to tr oh, as, a, as a pairing. So you're actually racing against a teammate rather than just the AI. Just the AI. No split screen. So you can no longer play... Oh, on the same console at the same time with multiple players. What me and my cousin did this every, in every single F1 game since 2011 when it when it came back, and we were unable to do this in 2015, which was quite disappointing. No safety car during races. Now this was once again un, oh, unforgivable and very disappointing because again this feature was in the game since 2011, and the safety car is really important in certain races in F1 in real life. I mean, how many times have you seen it in the F1 races how the race can be completely turned on its head by a safety car? I mean, drivers can then come back, if we've had a bad start, can then come back into the race and get a decent result. And then the reverse for the guys who are leading the race. So, for example, if a guy's got a 20-second lead 
and then that lead is all of a sudden evaporated because of one safety car. And lastly, there was no real career mode. So what I mean by that is that you weren't able to put your name in the game and do an actual career mode for a couple of seasons. The only thing we got close to, got close to that was championship season and pro season, which is essentially a harder championship season mode. So I didn't consider pro season as another as an extra game mode in that case. Basically, championship season was where you just took control of one of the drivers and played one of either the 2014 season or the 2015 season with that given driver. And there wasn't any progression, you didn't do an extra season, there wasn't any aero development, so it was pretty much just season mode like you'd do in, a, uh, in a, any sports game. Now, that was the offline stuff. There was a lot of online problems as well, because some of the uh, racing leagues that are done on YouTube, they all had to... Um, go back to F1 2014, F1 2013 to actually run run these leagues and they were on, it was quite disappointing from their point of view to not be able to run this game. So this has put the Codemasters game franchise when it comes to the F1 in the balance. I mean, if obviously they're making F1 2016, I'm pretty sure they are making F1 2016, but this will be their eighth bite, eighth bite of the cherry considering they started all the way back in 2009 with the Wii version of the game and then now with the present day F1 2015 a lot, and then the, the future F1 2016 game. So there needs to be some changes t to improve this game, to improve the overall game and to get the fans back more excited and more hyped and be able to play the game a lot more than what we had before. And the first thing that should be fixed is pretty much the online gameplay. I mean there's YouTubers out there like Fizzy Fan and Noble and Matty G who are pretty much dominant guys in the F1 leagues when it comes to online racing, but they weren't able to race in it, and it was quite disappointing from their point of view, from their point of view, not being able to do that. The other thing that we need to do is fix all the glitches that I've mentioned, that were mentioned, and what have been what's been talked about in other F1 videos, but also bring back all these features that are displayed on the screen. The safety car is definitely important. We need that back in the game. Scenario mode, not so much. I mean, people did play the get play, play that, but. I don't, I'm not fussed if not, that's not brought back. Um, split screen definitely needs to make a comeback and also co-op championship needs to make a comeback. Now for the other part of this video, or actually the final part of this, this video, is my thoughts on what I would do if I was trying to create the a new F1 career mode. Now I understand there are limitations when it comes to the career mode. The fact that uh, F1 management don't want drivers to change teams in seasons, which I think is a bit, a bit ridiculous considering in FIFA and NHL and all the sports games that EA runs, um, FIFA and all the governing bodies in the sports industries allow that to happen. So why can't F1 do that? Just please just do it for once. But now I'm going to work it with that constraint of not being able to change teams on the fly or change teams, for example, Hamilton moving to, I don't know, Ferrari. I don't know if that's realistic or not, but I'm just going to leave it at that. So. Let's start with what we've got, what we've had so far. So as I've said before, we've had seven games previously made by Codemasters, but why not use the data that we've had from, the, from 2010 onwards? We, the fact that we were able to play in the 2014 season in, to, in the 2015 game is quite promising. So why not have, in the options menu where you have the setup for the career mode, you just have the standing settings like your rule changes, at rules whether they're realistic or reduced or whatever. But then have two, or not, two, two more options where you decide how many seasons you want to go for and which season you want to start in. So if you want to start all the way back in 2010 and go all the way to the present day, you could do that. Or if you want to just go for just one season in the, the present day season, you can do that. Now, in terms of progression over the overall career mode, you'd have the, the standings, the drivers of constructors championship. So the performance of cars would, ve would vary depending on the car that they produced the following season in real life also to what they actually did in the game. So for example, if Mercedes did pretty well in 2012 compared to what they did in real life because they finished in fifth place, but if you were able to get them to finish, I don't know, in the top three, then there's some sort of weight that's added to the, the 2013 car, which was second in the Constructors' Camp Championship in real life. But then that puts them over the over the top and actually makes them the best car instead of Red Bull. I mean that sounds quite interesting, and the fact that you have the that sort of progression in the uh, game, and then depending on how the other teams have done, 
then they improve or improve or fade away. I don't know. That's, it. That's probably something that I would definitely play for the long haul to see what kind of stories we could create. For example, if you're bringing up, I don't know, mana and trying to get them all the way up to the top, I mean, that would be a fantastic, you know, story career mode. The other thing I want to talk about is, like, moving and changing teams. So, I would scrap the, oh, changing teams halfway through the season because that rarely happens, to be honest. I mean, it happens sometimes with the smaller teams, like um, Alexander Rossi coming into mana at, in halfway through the 2015 season. But just have all the moves, driver moves that you had in real life, for example, Hamilton moving to Mercedes. But depending on what you do, those moves may not happen. So, for example, um, if you move to Mercedes from tw in 2012 to 2013, then Hamilton doesn't get a seat, for example. So it would be quite similar to how the older career modes had, where you just take the place of one of the drivers in that team, depending on what team you're in. But then they come back if you've moved teams. Moved teams but then it's related to the season that you're in. So in 2014, so for example, if you're going from 2013 to 2014, if you went to from Mercedes to Red Bull, Hamilton would come back into the Mercedes um, garage, but then Ricardo wouldn't be wouldn't move up to Red Bull. He'd just be out of the 2014 season. And then the last thing I want to talk about is just bring back the aero development that we had in the previous career modes. I mean, it was just a quite a simple feature where you did performance tests on the practice sessions, which improved the car over whether and whether it succeeds or failed and it was just it just gave you a bit of progression to see how the car can develop if you went for an aggressive style when it came to the car development so you're fully focused on trying to get the best car this season or you're going to hold back until the next season and try and get a better car for the following season but i'd like to hear what your thoughts well, how would you do a career mode with the constraints of not being able to quote change driver lineups based off what's happened in real life I'd like to hear what your thoughts are for any other things about the career mode and also what could possibly be added to the F1 games to make it more playable and, and not be stale after only a couple of months. But anyways, that's the end of this F1 forum video. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe. Comment down, down in the comment section to see what your... I want to see what your thoughts are on what, where the future of the F1 games should go. And I'll see you for the next episode where it will most likely be a talk about what happened at the first test that's taking place next next week at Barcelona with the new cars being released. And also there's a couple of stories with regards to Manor announcing their full driver lineup with uh, Will Seaman sadly being dropped. But until then, see you later.